all right guys welcome back to scrub and spoon hope you're having a good day this is your nurse nurse funke and today we'll be talking about um insulin enclosed review we've put some good questions together and, and this is good for the rn the rpn students um so we're gonna go right into it but before we go please do not forget to like to subscribe to share and follow us on all platforms instagram scrub and spoon tiktok scrub and spoon and here on youtube okay guys thank you for your support always let's go select all that apply a nurse is teaching a client newly prescribed insulin glanging which of the following statements indicates proper understanding of the medication select all that apply a i will take my insulin glanging with meals b i should inject this insulin once daily at the same time C, this insulin does not have a peak time. D, I will mix my glanging with regular insulin in the same syringe. And E, I need to monitor for signs of hypoglycemia, even though it has no peak time, guys. Let me break this down to you. When you see a question that says select all, all that apply, you want to treat each question like true or false. So let's go, let's go over it. Now, I will take my insulin glanging with meals, guys. No. Insulin glanging has no peak time, so it's not meal dependent. So you do not have to take it with meal. It's taken once a day, regardless of meals. I should inject this insulin once daily at the same time. And for B, this is true because taking this um, insulin at the same time, once daily, helps to maintain the blood glucose, okay? C is true because glanging has no peak time. This reduces the um, risk of hypoglycemia but this require but glanging require steady timing you have to take it at the same time every day okay d i will mix my glanging with regular insulin in the same syringe never you mix long acting insulin like glanging with any other insulin never do not do that okay guys and the last one say i need to monitor for signs of hypoglycemia even though it has no peak this is very true. Even though glanin has no peak time, you still have to monitor for signs of hypoglycemia because sometimes um, your patient can skip meal or they have increased activities. Okay, so this is a, tr a true statement. Just remember, when your patient is stressed, you increase insulin for them. So when they have when they have a lot of activities, insulin needs increase. Okay, a patient with type one diabetes is prescribed insulin Lispro. Six units subcutaneously before meals. The nurse administer the insulin at 7.30 a.m. When should the nurse monitor most like, closely for hypoglycemia? A. 7.45 a.m. B. 8.30 a.m. C. 9.30 a.m. And D. 11.30 a.m. Guys, you have to know for Lispro, this is a rapid acting insulin and you want to know the, the onset and the peak time. That's how you can answer these questions, right? Now, the onset for um for um Lispro is between ten to fifteen minutes. You give so this patient is, is scheduled for this insulin at seven thirty. So let's assume you give this you give them this insulin at seven thirty. Remember, there must be meal at the bedside before you give them, and you check their blood glucose before giving them. You give them this insulin at seven thirty, right? The onset is between ten to fifteen minutes, right? They must eat between that onset time between that 10 to 15 minutes after you give them the insulin okay and now the peak time the peak time is between 30 minutes to 90 minutes so you want to after giving them you want to come back 30 minutes check the blood glucose are they still good if they are fine and then 90 minutes after right right you want to come back and, and 90 minutes after it was after the insulin was given to them so it was given to them 7 30 90 minutes after will be 9 a.m. You want to come back and check because it's and check the blood glucose because it is at this time they are at the highest risk of hypoglycemia. Okay, because peak time is the is the time the insulin is working the strongest. All hands on deck to bring that um, blood glucose down. Okay, and this is the next time they need to eat to avoid or to prevent hypoglycemia. So now the option given us given to us there is no 9 a.m here right but the closest we have here is 8 30 a.m because 9 30 a.m has already passed the peak time 
right so the closest option here is 8 30 a.m and they will be at higher risk of hypoglycemia by this 8 30 so this is the right answer select all that apply which of the following are common signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia a bradycardia select all that apply b tremors c sweating d confusion e warm warm flushed skin and f irritability so we treat select all that apply as true or false so bradycardia no if in fact they're gonna have tachycardia tremors yes that's true sweating yes confusion absolutely warm flow skin no remember cold and clammy give the candy so when the blood glucose is low they need candy so warm flow skin is not is not right it's going to be cold and clammy and then irritability which is true so the answer is b c d f I hope you get that right okay a nurse is caring for a client prescribed regular insulin 10 units subcutaneous before lunch lunch is delayed what should the nurse do a administer the insulin and document b give the insulin anyway to maintain routine c hold the insulin until full tray is um present d administer insulin with juice to prevent hypoglycemia and guys the right answer is hold the insulin until the full tray is present. Guys, if you give your patient insulin, I kept saying this, without food presence, you're going to send your patient to hypoglycemia. They're going to be hypoglycemic, okay? So you have to wait on the full tray, all right? If you call and the full tray is not going to be there, you have to hold on until you see the food, until the full tray is present. Let's go through the wrong choices. Administer the insulin and document. Like I said, you're gonna say they're gonna be hypoglycemic if, if you give them insulin without food. Give the insulin anyway to maintain routine with short acting insulin. Dosing must consider meal timing. Like I said, you want to know the onset because those are important and the peak time. Those are important. You don't give them that insulin to maintain any routine, okay? D administer insulin with juice to prevent hypoglycemia. So juice alone is not substitute for full meal right so even if you are giving them juice juice alone is not a, it's not a good substitute for um full meal they need a full meal in the system so the insulin have something to work on okay so juice alone can do it okay all right which insulin type should a nurse anticipate administering intravenously in an emergency situation such as diabetes ketoacidosis okay Diabetes ketoacidosis is an extreme hyperglycemia situation. A. NPH insulin. B. Insulin glanging. C. Regular insulin. And D. Insulin Lispro. Guys, the only insulin that is approved to be given through or via IV is regular insulin, which is the short acting. Every other insulin, they are not ad ad administered to IV. Regular acting is the only insulin that is administered, uh, approved to be administered through IV. So the rest of the options are wrong. Okay, guys. Now, the next one is select all that apply. The nurse is teaching a client how to store insulin. Which of the following instructions should be included? Remember how we treat select all that apply. We treat it as true or false. Okay. Now, store on open valves in the refrigerator. Keep open insulin at room temperature for up to 28 days. Freeze insulin to extend shelf life. D. Avoid exposing insulin to direct sunlight. And E. Shake the valve vigorously before each use. Now guys, we treat it as true or false. Store on open valves in the refrigerator. This is true. Okay. Keep open insulin at room temperature for up to 28 days. Guys, this is true. C. Freeze insulin to extend shelf life. Never freeze insulin because this reduces or affects its potency, its effectiveness. So do not freeze insulin, okay? And D. Avoid exposing insulin to direct sunlight. This is true. This is true. This is true because that will degrade the insulin, the potency of that insulin. So you don't expose it to sunlight. Shake the valve vigorously 
before each use do not shake the insulin if at all anything you want to roll 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 your boat you want to roll the valve okay do not shake insulin especially with cloudy insulin like um nph you do not want to shake shake it you just want to roll 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 your boat okay awesome the nurse is preparing to administer rapid acting insulin before patient's meal arrange the following steps in the correct order one verify the patient's blood glucose two confirm meal tray is present three perform hand hygiene four draw up the prescribed dose of insulin and five administer insulin so guys on this list the first thing you want to do remember your hand hygiene is number three perform your hand hygiene okay and then the next thing you want to do you want to verify your patient's glucose blood glucose okay and then the next thing you want to do you want to confirm meal tray is present right like i told you do not give your patient insulin without milk meal tray being present okay do not administer insulin even if it's scheduled you have to ensure that meal will be present especially for the onset and the peak time okay and then the next thing you do is number four you drop the prescribed dose of insulin and the next thing you're going to do is you administer the insulin if completed that proper practice okay let's go which of the following best explains why insulin glanging cannot be missed with other types of insulin in the same syringe a it alters the color of the insulin b it increases the risk of allergic reaction c it changes the absorption and action of glanging and d it causes increased blood glucose level and the answer is c it changes the absorption and action of glanging mixing glanging destroy its long acting release mechanism so you don't want to mix, mix it okay and a b d um uh, they are not accurate they are not right which action by the nurse are appropriate when administering nph insulin gently roll the valve between palms shake the valve vigorously inject in the same site daily for consistency um rotate injection sites rotate injection sites within the same anatomical area and the last one e ensure insulin appears cloudy before administration so this is a select all that applies guys let's select the right answer a gently roll the valve between palms like i told you you don't shake vigorously you want to roll 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 your boat that is true shake vigorous valve vigorously no 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 inject in the same side daily for consistency no 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 you do not you have you if at all you need to rotate the sides you do not want to cause um tissue damage or skin breakdown in that area okay so you want to rotate the side now you see d rotate injection sites within the same anatomical area this is good and ensure insulin appear cloudy before administration which is true nph is um, a cloudy insulin so you want to make sure it appears cloud cloudy before administering a diabetic patient is npo for surgery and scheduled for money insulin what should the nurse do first a administer the insulin as ordered b hold all insulin doses c notify the healthcare provider for further instruction and d give insulin with iv fluids and right guys the right answer is um c notify the healthcare provider for further instructions right because the provider must decide how to adjust the insulin if the patient is mpo the provider have to make decisions on what to do for a administer the insulin as ordered they have surgery the next money and they are NPO during the time they're going to have surgery. Remember, you cannot just administer this medication, this insulin because it's ordered. They need to eat. They need to have food to take their insulin, right? And since they are already on NPO, you know they cannot eat. Nothing by mouth. So you need to call the healthcare provider to give you the next instruction. What are we going to do? Hold all insulin doses. Like I said, you still need to call the healthcare provider to decide what to do now do you give insulin iv with iv fluids iv fluids alone do not replace food so you still have to call the healthcare provider he will be the one to decide what we're gonna do okay which statement by a client taking rapid acting insulin indicates a need for further teaching when i say further teaching they need 
further clarification or further education okay i will eat my meals immediately after injecting my insulin i will i'll inject my insulin in my abdomen for faster absorption i can skip my insulin if i skip a meal i know this insulin start working in about 10 minutes guys for rapid acting insulin it start working the onset is is between 10 to 15 minutes so now let's treat this as a like true or false right i will eat my meals immediately after injecting my insulin this is right okay because of the onset right i will inject my insulin in my abdomen for faster absorption yes subcutaneously that is correct i can skip my insulin if i skip a meal this is not right no never tell them to skip insulin okay even though we say you have to have meal and food or food to take your insulin so this this patient is saying now that i'm not eating i don't have to take my insulin that is not right right because if they skip morning breakfast they skip afternoon meal and they're skipping their insulin too because they are skipping meal they'll be hyperglycemic because they're not taking the insulin if they skip the meal in the morning and they didn't take that insulin and they do the same thing in the afternoon they, they did not take the insulin guess what's gonna happen their blood glucose is gonna spike they're gonna be hyperglycemic it can even lead to severe dka okay so they shouldn't do that and the last one said i know this insulin start working in about 10 minutes this is a correct this is correct this is correct okay so the only statements that need education and clarification is c i can skip my insulin if i skip a meal no which of the following insulin types are considered long acting insulin death smear okay this is a select all that apply insulin glanding regular insulin insulin de and de degludec and insulin aspart now all that apply select all that apply you treat them like true or false insulin death smear that is a long acting insulin glanding that is long acting um insulin the the glue deck this is long acting the only two that are not long acting is the regular insulin and insulin aspart which is rapid insulin okay the nurse is educating a client on mixing nph and regular insulin what is the most important instruction to to include draw up the nph insulin first then the regular insulin b with b you can mix insulin glanging with nph c use separate syringe for each insulin type and d draw up the clear insulin first then the cloudy one right this is and the, and the correct answer is d you want to instruct or educate them that they need to drop the clear first before the cloudy one like nph okay now let's go through the wrong choices drop the nph insulin first then the regular insulin no it should be the other way around you draw the regular insulin before the nph okay um b you can mix insulin glanging with you should never mix glanging never mix glanging okay do not and um for c use separate syringe for each insulin no for regular insulin and nph you, you use one syringe for them okay guys one syringe so um c is also wrong so the only correct answer is draw up the clear insulin first then the cloudy one and the last one guys the last one a nurse is evaluating a newly diagnosed um, diabetic client's technique for self-administering insulin which behavior requires correction a inject insulin at a 90 degree angle into fatty tissue storing open insulin in the fridge rotating injection sites in the tie use an insulin pen with a new needle each time and the answer that needs correction is b storing open insulin in the fridge that is open insulin are stored in a, a room temperature for up to 28 days right so storing it in the fridge is not the right um, practice acd and um, this demonstrates correct um practice okay all right guys thank you for your support until the next time bye